I'm John Skinner, and this supports Chapter 11 in my book, Fishing the Bucktail. And the rig I'll be using is a 3 quarter ounce SNS bucktail tipped with a gulp swimming mullet, 4 inch, and above that is a 3 inch gulp shrimp. So the previous fluke video that I posted was out on an ocean reef out in 85 feet of water. So I decided to uh, do the complete opposite. Go inside in a bay into shallow water and fish uh, basically 5 to 8 feet of water. So that's what I'm looking to do on this trip. And uh, just getting started, I actually don't have my landing net where it's supposed to be. I have it where it is when I'm... Uh, traveling out so got to get that and of course it gets hung on the bungee cord and yeah it's always things like this that are going to happen and this is a, a decent fish good way to start the trip off uh, a keeper for sure our um, minimum size limit uh, for this trip it's 18 inches okay now i've uh, made a move and uh yeah, the first spot I was in, I was trying to stay away from the, the main boat channel, keep away from the boat traffic, but uh, the fishing was a little bit slow there. I picked up that one okay fish and made a couple drifts and didn't do much, so I worked my way further back into the bay, and uh, you'll see I, I'll have to deal with some boat waves um, as I'm going along. So I'm a little off the area that I normally fish here, so you see I reached forward and uh, made a mark with the GPS uh, just for that one fish to give myself a little bit of reference. Um, this is a real nice fish for the bay, and uh, yeah, I'll definitely want to make some more drifts over that area. The weather is not as scary as it looks. Um, you see a little blue sky there, and uh, yeah, just some low clouds, no thunderstorms on the radar or anything, actually no rain. Uh, so it's, it's not that bad. One of the things I wanted to highlight on this trip is, you know, what do you do with your catch? And, you know, I, for quite a while I've been keeping fish on a stringer when I fish in the kayak, and it works out okay. They stay alive for hours, but, you know, ideally you'd like to be able to um, keep them in a cooler, but having a cooler on board a kayak and it takes up space and space is at a premium so uh... in a few moments here we'll get to see uh... something that i've been kind of relatively new for this particular season that i've been doing and uh... it's been working out real well but before we get to that uh, yeah you know a boats going by i'm staying well out of the channel because i don't want to you know be really close to these boats but I have to deal with their waves, so you know I always have my paddle in a position that I can paddle easily, and I, I just can't be taking these waves broadsided uh, and be completely safe about it. So I frequently have to keep my eyes open if I see some boat waves coming. I give it a few paddles and get the pointy end of the kayak into the waves, and, and that works out. So I mentioned the 18-inch minimum size limit. I'm quite sure this guy's going to make it, but uh, you know I want to be absolutely sure. Um, yeah, on this uh, rod pod, this hatch cover on the kayak, there's a ruler, and uh, it's actually pretty good because you can push the fish right up against it. It's a little bit raised, and you have to close the mouth on these fluke when you measure them. And uh, yep, this one's going to make it. So, all right, so it's going to go in the cooler, and um, here it is. I've got it behind me in the tank well. It's this canvas bag. It is um, called a flounder fluke and blackfish kayak band. It's made by Canyon Products. They make all different sizes. This model is a B30, B as in boy. You can see it goes right in there. I've already got two fluke in there and there's plenty of room. Um, I carry like seven small uh, gel ice packs that are in Ziploc bags and um, I think it's better to have multiple, um, have a bunch of small ice gel packs as opposed to like one big one because then I can scatter them around a little bit and uh, it's worked out really well. I'll say a few more words about the, the cooler in a second. 
All right, right from the hook set, I was skeptical that this was going to be a fluke. Uh, but it's a good chance for me to say something about the rod. This is a prototype. Uh, it will be called a Tsunami Slim Wave. And uh, it was quite popular at uh, the iCast show uh, this past summer. And, oh, it's, it's great. Uh, it, it's only, this one is only six feet. And it's just beautiful for the kayak. And you can see there, you know, I'm putting pressure on this thing. But it's got some backbone. Oh, yeah, that's not a fluke. Now, uh, for a second there, I saw lots of brown, so I, I did grab the net. But it's just a big skate. But it's going to put some pressure on this rod. And you can see that um, the section just above where my, my hand is, you know, that's staying pretty straight. It's, it's got some backbone. I think you could really handle some larger fish on this thing. And here's another one of those times where I've got to maneuver a little bit and put the bow of the kayak into some boat waves. Uh, what's interesting is uh, I, the last several trips that I've done have been uh, like 2.7 miles off the beach out in the ocean and uh, fishing among boats on the reef and out there among all the big boats I rarely have to deal with waves. Uh, it's um, actually more relaxing than fishing in the bay. The bay is uh, a lot more boat traffic going by, and if you're anywhere near the channels, which is typically where the fluke are, um, then you do have to deal with the boat waves. And to people who don't fish on kayaks, uh, they might look tippy, but these are actually quite stable. Um, I've never flipped. I've not actually come close to flipping. And if I did, um, you know, with a sit-on-top kayak like this, it's not a big deal to roll it back over and get on. I'd just be more worried about losing gear. I've got a PFD on, so uh, there's you know, no issues about uh, being able to stay afloat or anything. So you saw the rig at the beginning of the video. Uh, there's not a lot of bait in the bay, so I'm using that 3-inch gulp shrimp uh, above the bucktail. That's on a 3.0 Gamagatsu bait holder hook. And uh, the bottom bucktail is an SNS 3 quarter ounce. On this trip, quite a few of the fish came on the bucktail. They hit the SNS. Um, and you know, I'm showing just the larger ones here. For every keeper you're seeing, uh, I'm catching two short fluke. So when I'm fishing the bay and there's not a lot of bait around, like sand eels and so forth, um, I really like to use that gulp shrimp on the teaser hook because even in the absence of bait, there are still small crabs and shrimp and all kinds of stuff in the mud, and the fluke will feed on those, so that shrimp is a, a pretty good imitation. So this one's going to end up in the cooler bag, and I've had some uh, longer trips when I've gone out in the ocean. I've been out for six hours or so, and I've had that thing packed with fish, and they've come in, and they're still cold. So it's a very impressive product. So those low clouds have uh, finally cleared out, but that happened on a wind shift, and now I've got the wind blowing against the current. So uh, I'm almost stationary. The drift has really just died right off. That's why I have a spinning rod on board. And this is a 7-foot pen battalion, rated 8 to 15 pound test line. There's a pen clash 3000 spinning reel, spooled with 15 pound test spider wire ultra cast. I'm cranking very slow, keeping that uh, rapid jigging action. You see I've already swung a couple times and missed a fish. Uh, just keep it moving. They'll keep following. and. It missed another one right there, and I'm just confident, you know, that, that fish is going to keep on coming. It's what I've seen on the underwater video. Uh, you can see it's real shallow, only about three or four feet of water here, and under these circumstances, casting works out beautifully. And there we go, finally got him hooked up. And Yeah, he's right at the boat. Uh, it's, uh, he's close to the boat, and it's so shallow. Got him up pretty, pr pretty fast there. So once I had a couple of keepers in that cooler bag for dinner, I stopped using the net. If this one gets away, that's just fine. Um, it's just a lot easier to not have to mess around with the net in the cockpit of the kayak. But boy, these things can be hard to grab. This one's quite energetic and acrobatic. And uh, yeah, wet and slimy thrashing around. Yep, finally got a hold of them. And this one's going to turn out to be a keeper also, and that's my uh, five fish livet. Alright, I hope you found this enjoyable, and if you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel.